So are you feeling better about this space given what they delivered today? Well, I mean, if Goliath is winning this battle, we all know, David, you need a David to win the war. And the regional banks are David here. And so that, to me, is so interesting. Clearly, J.P. Morgan is best in class. To have this type of return today, you're seeing a tremendous amount of hedge funds that clearly got caught off sides to see this type of return. But that, that, that return in J.P. Morgan is coming at the expense of the regional banks. I mean, PNC had earnings. They were solid earnings. They went in their deck in excruciating amount of detail talking about they only have 2.7 percent office, their deposits, and it's down 1 percent. And so to me, it's like the J.P. Morgan's the city, the Bank of America, are really important to the stock market. But the regional banks are important to the economy because that's really the grease in the economy. And I looked at IAT, which is the iShares Regional Bank Index. Scott, it's trading back at 2014 levels. Technically, they look terrible. And so for me, while it's great that Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, they all are going to have good numbers. To me, you really want to see some stability in the stocks of the regional bank, because that tells you what's going to happen in the broad economy, because that is the lending machine in the U.S. What do you think, Dan Greenhouse? What, what about the banks now? I mean, are, I think better than feared is an appropriate way to assess what was delivered today and the way that it's being received on Wall Street. Well, listen, sentiment wasn't great going into the quarter. Positioning uh, was not great going into the quarter. And, and but, but I think to echo a point Mike made earlier and Bryn touched on, J.P. Morgan is very much a item unto itself. And, and the, really, the, the, the big three, the big four banks are items unto themselves. The, the real financials, the real bank story is going to come next week, as, as you guys have all touched on, when Comerica and KeyBank and everybody else reports. That's going to give us the data from a broad market and a broad economy But if you look at this, though, and you say, OK, well, if you're worried about uh, recession, you know, imminent, um, you look at this and you say, oh, no, guess was, not. Yeah, no, there was... There was nothing in the reports, whether it was PNC or Citi or J.P. Morgan, from a high-level standpoint, that gave you any indication you were any closer to the elusive recession than you were the day before. So is that then the market's down today? Now, I know the Dow, it's hard to look at that because it's a two-stock story for the most part in Boeing and United Health. But is part of what we're seeing in the market the, OK, Fed's going to stay on the pedal? Pedal's going to be the floor, like, you know, they, uh, Waller was talking about earlier today. Yeah, I mean, there was a bunch of economic data out this morning, and it's a Friday, so we can chalk this up to a number of different things. But I think the, the Waller comments obviously play into this conversation as well. In terms of Bryn not being ready to take your foot off the gas, right? Is that is that what you think is still the overhang? If you get you get a couple of down, you know, negative reports, retail sales negative, so you're like, okay, now we got to worry about the consumer cracking, but then you got some bank results and you're like, wow, I guess the economy's holding up pretty well still. That means the Fed's still going to be in play. So here's, here's the way I think about it is that, first of all, the Fed has never stopped a tightening cycle before Fed funds were above CPI. So right now, if I just go to June and we say CPI continues to grow at 0.4 month over month, just because we're dropping off March April or March, May and June of 2022, Scott, CPI by the end of June will be at 3.16. Fed funds are at 4.8. I mean, the Fed is close to done. I can't imagine them to continue to tighten if you have a three, a three CPI and a five Fed funds that wouldn't make sense. So I'm less concerned that the Fed's going to continue to tighten over the next few months, maybe one basis point or 25 or, or, or 50 over the next couple months. But listen, going back to 1985, it gets murkier after that. We don't just mosey into a recession. There's always an event where there is Iraq, Kuwait, 9-11, uh, Lehman failing, COVID. There are these events that occur. And so I do think the economy today is still strong. And that's what's really hard for the bears to say, we're going to go into a recession. You're going to have to pick this event, this ephemeral event that none of us can occur, can, can predict. And so that's why I think we're going to muddle along. But I do think the S&P is tired here. I don't think we're going to get much more traction until after earnings season and there's more clarity if we have been able to grow into the multiples of this, these tech stocks that have really expanded, mm -hmm. I think, too much. All right. What do you want to say? I, I just want if the, if the CPI is going up 0.4 percent per month, I don't care what the headline year-over-year -year inflation rate is doing. The Fed's not going to be done raising rates.